In this video, we'll be looking at the ozone layer and the problems with chlorofluorocarbons. To start, let's look at radiation. Most forms of radiation are invisible to us, for example, radio waves, microwaves, and infrared. We can only see a tiny sliver of the electromagnetic spectrum, which makes up all visible light. For our purposes today, ultraviolet is the most significant radiation. Ultraviolet is what gives us suntans, causes cataracts, and more seriously, skin cancer. So to protect ourselves from the harmful UV radiation, we put on sunscreen and wear sunglasses. Luckily, God gave the Earth its own sunscreen and sunglasses in the form of the ozone layer. But you'll notice that the UV light hitting Earth is divided into three categories. UVA, which reaches deep into the skin, causing aging, wrinkles and cataracts. UVB, which causes redness, burning and skin cancer. And UVC, which is absorbed by the ozone. UVC is the most dangerous. A quick way to remember which is which is by UV aging, UV burning, and UV caught. Quick test. Which form of UV light is responsible for the damage shown here? If you said UVA, well done. Now that we know a bit about the basic function of each form of UV, we can see how they interact with the ozone layer. Starting with UVA, this goes straight through with very little natural defense from the ozone. UVB is filtered by the ozone and we receive a reduced dosage of what was intended. Finally, UVC is completely absorbed by the ozone layer and keeps us safe. That's why the ozone layer is Earth's sunscreen and sunglasses. But what is the ozone layer and why is it under attack? First, let's explore the default settings of the ozone so we can understand what went wrong. Only one-fifth of the air you breathe is oxygen. Those oxygen atoms come in pairs, but they do a lousy job at blocking UV. But they do absorb UV, which can split oxygen molecules into two separate oxygen atoms. This single oxygen atom can combine with nearby oxygen molecules. This forms a molecule with three oxygen atoms known as an ozone molecule. Now ozone molecules do a great job at blocking UV. But ozone molecules absorb so much UV that, at some point, it will split and combine with nearby oxygen molecules. Essentially, UV blocking ozone is turned to UV vulnerable oxygen, and UV vulnerable oxygen is turned back into UV blocking ozone. And for a long time, this healthy, sustainable process has been constant. But this is when chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs for short, come into the equation. Essentially, refrigerants for air conditioning units, propellants and aerosol cans, and car AC coolants all contain CFCs. Given these facilities are very popular, lots of CFCs escaped into the atmosphere, and this creates a very significant problem. CFCs are complicated molecules, with a carbon base with different kinds of atoms attached, like chlorine. UV breaks up the CFCs, splitting the chlorine atom away. The chlorine atom reacts with UV blocking ozone molecules, tearing off an oxygen atom, creating UV-vulnerable oxygen molecules. The new chlorine-oxygen compound is then broken up by UV, and will eventually recombine oxygen atoms into oxygen molecules which don't block UV. In the end, you've got a little factory. Chlorine atoms convert UV-blocking ozone molecules into UV-vulnerable oxygen atoms, a process that destroys the ozone and dismantles the Earth's natural protection. The worst part is these CFC molecules are stable. They can hang around for more than 100 years, and all the while destroying Earth's natural sunscreen layer. And now you know what the ozone layer is, its significance, the danger of chlorofluorocarbons, and the depleting ozone layer. Thank you for watching. Please like, leave a comment, share, and subscribe to continue supporting the channel.